Humans have coexisted with a multitude of deadly bacteria and viruses throughout history. But what would happen if we were exposed to a deadly disease that had been frozen for thousands or even millions of years and was now defrosting and rising from its dormant state due to climate change? Welcome to Wiser. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. Frozen organics coming back to life after being thawed out is nothing new. Painted turtle hatchlings can survive being partially frozen, able to withstand their bodily fluids going well below zero degrees Celsius, and can even survive substantial ice formation in their tissues. A species of wood frog called Rana sylvatica can stop its heart, cease all muscle and breathing movements, and survive becoming up to 70% frozen during the winter. When spring comes, they thaw out and hop back into action. Then there's tardigrades, practically indestructible. They can withstand being frozen all the way to minus 273 degrees Celsius. They can also be boiled, nuked, crushed with extreme pressure and sent into the vacuum of space with no harm done. But more on those in another video. Freezing does not kill germs, bacteria and viruses. Instead, it essentially puts them into hibernation. They will wake up, so to speak, as soon as they thaw out, which means that they could potentially survive for an unlimited amount of time. So, to understand how these deadly ancient diseases could be released, we first need to understand what permafrost is. Permafrost is soil, rock or sediment that has been frozen for more than two consecutive years. It's usually beneath a layer of ice, if not, it's below an active layer of soil, rock or sediment which freezes and thaws out annually with the seasons. Permafrost regions cover 24% of exposed land in the Northern Hemisphere and are also present under the seabed in the Arctic Ocean. The permafrost in the Northern Hemisphere contains 1,700 billion tonnes of organic material. That's almost half of all the organic material in all of the soils on Earth. Contained within that organic material could be all manner of ancient bacteria and viruses from a time long before us. Most permafrosts have been frozen since the last ice age, around 10,000 years ago, but the oldest permafrost is estimated to be more than a million years old. If an area like this is thawed out, it really could be like opening Pandora's box. Unfortunately, that box is being opened. The Arctic permafrost has been diminishing for many centuries now. The soil is thawing, and where soil thaws, methane is released. This contributes to an increased rate of global warming, causing more permafrost to thaw out, and even more methane to be released, in a kind of exponential feedback loop. In 2012, Russian researchers proved that ancient life forms can be preserved in permafrost, when they revived a 30,000 year old flower which was buried in the Siberian permafrost way back in the last ice age. This was the oldest plant tissue ever revived and the study demonstrated that living tissue can survive ice preservation for tens of thousands of years. Fast forward to 2016 to a town called Salakard in northwest Siberia. A young boy there loses his life to anthrax and around 70 others are hospitalized. The people there are nomadic herders, and shortly before they became infected with anthrax, their reindeer began dying en masse to the disease, which is known there as the Siberian Plague. Anthrax is an infectious disease caused by bacteria known as Bacillus anthracis. It's found naturally in soil, and authorities there believe that over 75 years ago, a reindeer was infected with anthrax, and its frozen carcass was trapped in permafrost. Abnormally high temperatures in 2016 led to much of the permafrost that covers Russia to begin thawing. This released the frozen anthrax. A year later, the same area is experiencing huge random explosions that are leaving large craters up to 50 meters wide and 70 meters deep. As the permafrost thaws and loosens up, Massive underground deposits of flammable methane gas bubble up to the surface and then erupt. 
Not only is this incredibly dangerous, but large quantities of methane being released into the atmosphere is also of great concern, as it is a greenhouse gas that is 20 times more potent in this regard than carbon dioxide. This fuels the climate change feedback loop even more, driving worldwide temperatures even higher. Researchers also believe that another consequence of the permafrost melting is that deadly infections from centuries ago could see a resurgence. Scientists have discovered the 1918 Spanish flu virus in corpses buried in mass graves in Alaska's tundra. Recent studies on the Alaskan permafrost has shown that it could be thawing out at a rate much faster than we previously thought, with new measurements revealing that the permafrost there is releasing 5% of its carbon each year. Another instance of this is again in Siberia, where in the 1890s there was a major smallpox epidemic. One town lost up to 40% of its population to the disease, and their bodies were buried in the upper layer of permafrost on the banks of the nearby Kolyma River. 120 years later and the river is rising and its floodwaters have started to erode those banks containing the disease. Those who live in permafrost regions could be facing these diseases from the past once again. In a 2011 paper published in Global Health Action, authors Boris A. Revich and Marina A. Podolnaya wrote these predictions. As a consequence of permafrost melting, the vectors of deadly infections of the 18th and 19th centuries may come back, especially near the cemeteries where the victims of these infections were buried. We've dealt with these epidemics before, and we can deal with them again, but what happens when bacteria from thousands, or even tens of thousands of years ago, comes back from the dead? In a 2014 study, a team led by Professor Jean-Michael Claveri revived two viruses that had been trapped in Siberian permafrost for 30,000 years. Discovered 100 feet underground, these viruses were unlike any viruses of today. They were much larger, so big in fact that they are categorised as giant viruses and can be seen under a regular microscope. They quickly became infectious, but thankfully they did not infect humans. Still, the study suggests that other viruses which could infect humans could be revived in the same way. In a 2005 study, NASA scientists revived bacteria that had been trapped in a frozen pond in Alaska for 32,000 years. The newly discovered microbes, called Carnobacterium pleistocenium, had been frozen since woolly mammoths still walked the earth. Once the ice melted, they began swimming around as if no time had passed at all. Now get this, two years later, scientists found an eight million year old bacteria. It had been lying dormant in ice beneath the surface of a glacier in Antarctica, and once it thawed out, metabolic activity and respiration was detected in the sample. It was still alive, after 8 million years. Viruses from the very first humans to populate the Arctic could emerge, along with viruses from long extinct species, like the Neanderthals, which settled in Siberia and were riddled with various viral diseases. Professor Claveri has been analysing the DNA content of permafrost layers since 2014 searching specifically for the genetic signature of viruses and bacteria that could infect humans. He has found evidence of many pathogenic bacteria that are likely to be dangerous to human beings. Obviously, his team have been careful not to revive any of the dangerous pathogens, though they could be revived by mistake or climate change in the future. Another danger is that the water that flows out of many melting permafrost soils is flowing into rivers, lakes, water supplies and coastlines. This could cause a real problem as any of those dangerous pathogens could find their way directly into active water supplies and cause infections on a massive scale. The city of Yakutsk in Russia has over 100,000 inhabitants and is located upon a continuous permafrost. 
The solidity of the ground below the city is slowly failing due to previously frozen land melting away beneath them. Houses and other buildings built on permafrost are already suffering irreversible collapses and sinking, forcing people to abandon their homes. Many houses are built on extremely deep foundations to protect against it, and hot water pipes are run above ground, so that they do not increase the thawing effect. Yakutsk might also be one of the most dangerous zones for the possible release of these frozen diseases. With such a large population directly on top of a permafrost, there is a lot at stake there. The defrosting of the world's permafrosts has already taken a life in Siberia, and it will probably take more, with the potential for massive epidemics that we are not prepared for and have no immunity to. Can we stop the permafrost from melting? Maybe. One thing that I do know is that the everyday choices that we all make collectively, they have an impact on the world. By reducing our carbon footprint on the earth, investing in energy efficient products, supporting climate friendly businesses, legislation and policies, we can at least help to preserve the permafrost. It won't be easy, but if we fight hard enough, maybe we can keep what is meant to be frozen, frozen. Thank you for watching this episode of Wiser. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned some useful information. If you did, please hit those like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to see my future videos. If you wish to support me in making these, I'm on Patreon, and the link is in the description. You can also check out the previous episodes on my channel. Thanks again, I'll see you next time.